Hello everyone, it's Marie and welcome to another video. So in this video I'm giving you 8 reasons why you are failing to find your 88 days of farm work here in Australia. So let's go. So it really surprises me how many people struggle to find their 88 days of farm work in Australia. Literally I have managed to do about 6 months of farm work now in my first year and I got the jobs within just a couple of days of advertising for work. There are definitely tricks and ways that you can get these jobs and honestly it just surprises me how many people I see on Facebook who just can't find any work and I think that it comes down to a lot of points but here I've basically put together a list of 8 reasons why you're not managing to find it so let's get into the list now. So first of all I think the main reason why people are failing to find their farm work is they actually don't know their options and what kind of work is available. This is Australia, it's pretty much a farming nation. There are so many jobs, opportunities that you can do. You don't have to just go and pick fruit on the coast. You can work on a sheep farm, a camel farm, a goose farm, pig farm. There's cattle stations, you could do fencing or tractor work. You can do fruit picking, you can do sorting and pack house work, mining. There are so many things you can do in so many locations. And if you don't know what your options are, how are you supposed to find a job? You can't just type into Google Farm Work Australia and expect all the options to come up for you because like anything you've got to niche down a bit and would you normally apply for a job in real life without knowing what you're looking for? Normally you'd think I want a bar job or I want a retail job. You'd have an idea of what you want in order to get that kind of job. So if you think dairy farming is for you then look in Victoria and Tasmania on Gumtree and on Facebook and apply for actual dairy farming jobs or at least make an ad on Facebook and Gumtree with options like hey I'm looking for rural farm work. Let them know what are you looking for? Are you looking to work with cattle or horses on a stud farm? Do you want to do some gardening in the outback? What do you want to do? Have a look for things you think you'll be interested in. Don't just kind of ask for farm work as a generalization because farm work kind of means so many things. I think that if you find out what you're looking for and what you want to do, you'll find it easy to find work. I've also made two videos. One is unique kinds of farm work jobs you can do in Australia and I've put them up here in this video and I'm also in the process of making a all the different options of farm work you can do in Australia video which will be number two and I'll link it up here when it's done. If you want to know more about what kind of job opportunities there are in Australia then definitely watch those videos because they should give you a bit more of an idea of where to look for work and what to do. The second reason you're not finding farm work is you actually don't know where to look. And this means you don't know where to look online but it also means you don't know what areas to look in. If you want to find your farm work, I personally have found my farm work using Facebook and Gumtree. I'll get to that in a moment. But you've also got to think about where in Australia do you want to work. If you want to work on a cattle station, maybe you should look in the outback. Try outback Queensland or the Northern Territory, those kind of areas. Do you want to work on a dairy farm or a sheep farm? Well, maybe New South Wales or Victoria or even Tasmania would be better options for you. Do you want to do some fruit picking on the coast? Maybe look in Queensland. Up near Cairns, there is banana farming and all kinds of different fruit and vegetable farms you can do. Or do you want to work in WA? Maybe you want to do some vineyard work or some winery work. Think about what you want to do and what location that's in. Say for example I want to do a dairy farm job, well maybe then I will look in rural Victoria Facebook pages or I can look in Gumtree and type in Tasmania or Victoria into my search engine because that's where the jobs are. When I wanted an outback job I looked on Facebook groups and I typed in keywords like Outback, Cattle Station, Queensland because I knew that's the locations they were in. If you want a job in Cairns, maybe you could join a Backpacker Jobs in Cairns Facebook group. Personally I found when getting a job it's best to kind of narrow it down to what you want to do and what you're interested in because then you're more likely to get the job. And that brings me on to point number three. Show that you're passionate and interested in actually doing these jobs. I think a lot of the reason backpackers fail to find work is because they come across as uninterested and like they only want to use the farm work to get the 88 days. It's surprising how many backpackers think 88 days is like a prison sentence or just something they have to do and they begrudgingly doing it because they have to get the 88 days. Well that shouldn't be the case. I think it's some of the best experiences you can have in Australia and I'd say a lot of people who have worked on animal farms and doing things like what I've done have really had incredible and amazing experiences. So go into it with an open mind and like I said think about what you want to do. Maybe you're interested in shearing sheep or working on an organic grape picking farm. I don't know, whatever your interests are and whatever you would enjoy doing, maybe look in those areas and show farmers that you're actually passionate about doing these things and you want to do these things. Because if you come across as some backpacker who's just doing it because they have to, then farmers are probably going to be like, well, this person's not interested, I'm going to hire someone who actually wants to do it. So many people say to me, oh, I have no experience, all these jobs require experience. That's not true. 
I got my station job with no experience and loads of backpackers get jobs without experience. But you've got to be a bit initiative, which brings me on to the next point. Sell yourself. You have to sell yourself in an advertisement. You can't just make a post on Facebook with your photo and say, any farm work going, which I'm not joking, is what most people do. I look on these Facebook pages every single day. The amount of people who make posts saying, any farm work, any farm work, anyone got 88 days, that's not going to get you a job because you're not really selling yourself with that. When I made my advertisement on Gumtree for a job, I posted lots of photos of myself working in the great outdoors, doing things that make me look like I like this kind of work. And I made a very detailed ad giving all my previous work experience. And even if it's not farm work experience, just give experiences that could help your application. Do you like hiking and trekking? Do you like being outdoors? Have you helped with construction work before or done some sort of painting or done some sort of house sitting or working with animals? What have you done out in nature that's kind of farmy that could go towards your application? And also just give your other skills that you can do as well. The main point is that you show initiative and sell yourself and tell the farmer that you want to do this, you're interested in doing this, and you will be a good addition to the farm and that this is something you really want to do and desire to do. And like I said, just sell yourself, sell your skills and let them know you want to be here and want to be doing this. And make sure that you do treat this like a real job application, something that you really want and something you're actually applying for. Obviously there are lots of situations where you can ask your friends what they did and how to get these jobs and there are times people will just hand them to you easily but if you want a really good job with good pay, a good environment, I honestly think you should take it seriously and treat it like a real job application and just put some time into it basically. Okay so the next point is you often expect people to do it for you and I'm not saying everyone does this but you have no idea how many messages I get on a daily basis asking me hey what station did you work at what farm are you working on right now can you find me a job can you put me in contact with the farm you worked on that's not always possible obviously if your friend worked in a big company like a big fruit picking farm or a working hostel where they take hundreds of backpackers a year thousands of backpackers a year even the chances of them being able to give you the details are high but someone like me who worked for a small family run company I can't give out the personal information of my employer to every random stranger I met online because not only is it unprofessional on my behalf, if I kept giving out the personal information of where I worked, they probably wouldn't ever want to hire me again if I ever wanted to return. They'd probably get angry at me and also I want them to take my recommendation seriously and if I do have a friend that I know will really work hard in that role, I want to be able to refer them and my employer take it seriously and if I just give out their information to all the random people I met online then that's not going to happen so don't expect other people to give you their contacts it's not professional and it's not even really polite to do that obviously in the backpacking community we like to help each other and if I have ideas and information I can share I always try to do that like with these YouTube videos and in general I'm always giving out information but it is important to remember that my previous employer is my personal information and I can't just go out and hand that to everyone that contacts me and I'm not joking there's probably been over 300 people messaged me in the last year asking for information on people I worked for. It's not that hard to find a job that will provide you with accommodation and food and a good hourly pay. In fact, that's just the standard you should expect here in Australia. And I really do feel bad that a lot of backpackers are having such terrible experiences in these working hostels and these big companies that really exploit backpackers, pay them next to nothing on a piece rate, or pay them very low hourly pay that's illegal, I think, in some cases, and make them pay $400 a week for a shared accommodation with 12 people. But that is not what you should expect. You should expect, if you come to a small family run farm, you will expect to be trapped well. And obviously if you want to go somewhere with masses of backpackers, you've got to expect to be trapped worse, kind of, because literally you're so disposable. And that kind of leads me on to the next point. Don't go where everyone's going because you will be disposable and they will just not really care that much about you. If you're going to Bundaberg or Mildura or Mariba or all those places where all the backpackers go to pick through every single day, every single week, every single year, literally you're, there's thousands of backpackers flocking there all the time. And the rates are so low and the accommodation is crappy. I went to Bundaberg and I lasted there two days because it was bad and I didn't want to work in those conditions. But there are so many backpackers who do. I met so many backpackers who had been there for six months trying to get the 88 days because the work only comes like two or three days a week because it's weather dependent and they were making like $40 a day picking strawberries. That's not what I would put up with. So obviously I left and I seeked out better employment. I was in Bundaberg and at the hostel I was at literally people would get fired every single day because there's just backpackers turning up all the time 
They don't even need you all. So go somewhere where you're going to be needed and wanted and respected. And if you want good employment with good benefits and good pay and a good experience and to be trapped well and respected, don't go where everyone's at. And I'm not saying that all the places in these places that treat you bad. I'm sure some people have had amazing experiences. But in my experience, if you just go a bit more rural and you do go out, you know, a little bit further to those small family run farms and stuff, you really will have a much more enriching experience and actually really understand a more local Australian perspective too. My final point for this video is a lot of people go wrong by leaving it to the last minute to get the 88 days. If you're leaving it to the last minute, you're going to be put in quite a vulnerable position because you're going to just take the first thing that comes up and you're also going to be just very desperately looking for anything and you probably won't put the time and effort into finding something that you're truly passionate about that you're truly interested in doing, something you want to learn or finding a job that pays well because you're just going to go for whatever can give you 88 days and that's also kind of back onto the previous points you're probably not super interested in doing your 88 days and that's why you left it for the last minute but if you kind of change your perspective and mindset and you see your 88 days as something exciting and a chance to learn new things and as a chance to explore new places then really you can start looking for your 88 days work much sooner because you realise it's actually an enriching part of your Australian travel. For me, working in the outback was an incredible experience. There's a part of Australia that not many backpackers get to see and I got to live in a small outback town community for four months. It was honestly the best experience of my whole life in Australia. In fact, of my travels in general, it's been such an amazing experience and if I hadn't have done that for my 88 days, I wouldn't have even gone there. So use it as a chance to explore Australia in a different way and see a different part of the country and learn a new skill rather than just thinking, oh, I have to do it. Really take it seriously and do something you're going to enjoy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you a bit more of an idea what you could do to get your 88 days and what you are probably maybe doing wrong. I hope that this video didn't offend anyone but honestly so many people message me and it's not like they are stupid people it's just that they're lazy and they just don't want to even look for the work and they're just not putting in any effort and I think that yeah it does frustrate me a little bit because there is only so much I can do and other people can do to help give people advice if you don't want to help yourselves and find this job work yourselves you're not going to do it so I am hoping that this video might have just given you some ideas and made you think about what you might be doing wrong or if you haven't even started looking yet I hope it gave you some ideas of what you can do and how you can not make the mistakes that previous people have made so without further ado I'm gonna end this video here I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give this video a like and subscribe to see more content not only about traveling Australia but also I make videos about all kinds of things. I've been traveling for three and a half years now, working online, and I make videos with all kinds of content, giving advice and tips for how to travel, to travel cheaply and affordably, and how to work online, and all these kinds of things. So if you are interested, definitely subscribe, follow the journey, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.